I thank you very much for being here. The theme of our press conference today, everybody deserves a second chance. As you are aware, BSP has been um, a very successful school since inception. We have about 1,000 graduates, SCCA, CIMA, CFA, OBU, so far. And being a key player in this sector, we have noticed that all institutions, even the government, although they have some policies for failures, nevertheless, every school is just looking for those who have passed or who will pursue future studies, which is a good thing. But on the other hand, we have also noticed and put on record, and which is also on record, that almost eight to 10,000 students drop out from the normal school activities year after year. You know the pass rate for SC is 75-76%. The pass rate for HSC is nearly the same. For Form 3 and Form 4, we have report that about 1,000 student dropouts. And if you go back, the pass rate for the CPE is around 70%. And if Mauritius want to become a high income economy, bearing in mind that human resource is the only resources that we have on this island, therefore we have to do justice for those who could not pass first time or who have to stop the education for whatever reasons. And I myself, probably I will surprise you, I stopped school for about one year when my father passed away. Yet I managed to catch up because I, be, I received a second chance. Mr. Ramchand also uh, has experienced this and today he is a lecturer. He was a lecturer at the Royal College of Portwis and he was he is one of our best lecturers uh, in SCCA and AAT. So to do this, we cannot do this alone because this is a big challenge in order to bring back the dropouts in the system. First, as you said in French, you must have the volonté as an institution, although we're a private sector, because everybody runs business for money, of course. We will not do it for free, but we're going to give value for money in what we do. We had a talk with the Minister of Education some time ago, unofficially during affection, and we told her about our intention to bring the AAT qualification to Mauritius, and she mentioned something very important to us. She said that will they do their SC and HSC as well again? Then I said, okay, it's a point to ponder, and then because she mentioned a very good point that if they can catch up the SC and the HSE while doing AAT, then they will be able to get all the opportunities, for example, to work in the public sector or some employer they ask A level and O level before get, getting employed, especially in Mauritius. Then we gave this qualification a different orientation. Then we said, yes, we are going to take on board all those students who, did not, who could not succeed. Or not only for O level, A level, but there are a lot of students who started qualification, professional qualification, whether it is ABE, it is ACCA, ICAW, and they could not finish it because they started with a good hope, 
and then they have to drop out. And still, these do not want to study, and therefore, they are also being catered in this qualification. Not only, it's not a failure qualification, mind you. In the UK, uh, there are about 75,000 people doing it. 175 countries worldwide have 80 on their portfolio. And BSP, we are proud to be the pioneer in this. For the past three years, we have been talking with AAT UK, and finally, this year, we got the approval from MQA, and the good thing, we are not just making action, we are not just uh, uh, selling intentions, we are also making actions. If you look back behind us, this is our first batch of AAT students enrolled in this course, about 20 of them, and we are proud that they have already started their studies and probably you can have some interviews you can ask them from the host's mouth whether, whether they are happy with what they are doing here and you will be able to, to, to get their views and you know I think at the end of the day it will be a big achievement for BSP to have started this qualification uh, as we say everybody deserves a second chance and as BSP is also an accounting firm and audit arm, we are going to train these students in our curriculum, in, in uh, managing clients, managing portfolios. We also represent a software from India. We're going to train them how to use a software for SMEs. Now, I'm going to introduce you the nice lady next to me. She's been here for five days already, and she already fell in love with Mauritius. And also, uh, we have action so many meetings during these five days. She's a hard worker, as I must admit. And we have been meeting the MQA, HRDC, Business Mauritius, MIPA, SMEDA, and after, you, after this press conference, we're going to meet MRA and other stakeholders. You know, this qualification will not only help students, it will also help entrepreneurs. Because nowadays, as it is, an entrepreneur do not understand the balance sheet. Small entrepreneur, I mean. A balance sheet is a very important document for any person doing business. Yet, if you tell them what your balance sheet looks like, they can look at you as if they do not understand a single word. And yet, they are doing business by millions. So, this qualification will strengthen the SME sector. You know, in Mauritius, the Companies Act itself, there is a big disparity between the Companies Act and the Financial Reporting Act. The Financial Reporting Act mentioned clearly who is an accountant. What do they do? Whereas the Companies Act do not mention accountant. Accountant is a simple word in the dictionary. Anybody here can be an accountant. Whereas other professions like lawyers, engineers, this is clearly mentioned who should be a lawyer. So because of these loopholes, any Tom, Dick and Harry can sign an account when it is below 50 million. Because the Companies Act only mentioned auditors. Auditors are regulated. They said to you that auditors can sign an account. Who must sign an account when it is more than 50 million, when it is in the public interest? But the, the Companies Act stays quiet when it is below 50 million, before anybody can sign an account. And this is what is happening in this economy. Whereas other countries in Europe, Britain, America, they do not let it to happen. And there is a bookkeeper or there is a second chair qualifi qualified person who can sign a lower account. And this is what we need in Mauritius if we want to make a business regulated and people understand what is business. And therefore, this AD qualification will not only address who should be an accounting technician, who should be a bookkeeper, but also it will give SMEs uh, a way to recruit qualified person that can fit their budget to pay. Today, an SME is forced to take a qualified accountant and no SME can employ a qualified accountant as a full-time job because a qualified accountant, as you know, the package will start at least 30, 40, 50,000 rupees and they will have a lot of perks attached to that. 
Now, if a person is starting a business now with this qualification, they will be able to have a bookkeeper. And those students who are studying here, they will be trained how to manage an account of an SME. And then they can be work for that SME. And mind you, there are about 70, 80,000 SMEs in Mauritius. So we are not selling dreams to the population. There is, a, each SME deserves an accountant also. Now, I can go on and on. This is a very debatable topic. <laughs> you know, this is my topic, so I prefer to stop here. So let us again welcome Mrs. Enerich Coral, the International Operation Manager for AAT. And she has the mission also. She will tell you about the mission, her role, and what is AT, and what she has been doing in Mauritius for the past five days, and what is her future plan. And again, we will answer to your questions when it has to quench your time. So, welcome, uh, Mrs. Eneritz. The floor is yours now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm AT's International Operations Manager. Um, I will explain a little bit about my role within AAT and then a little bit about what AAT stands for, uh, but also what, what's the role of an accounting technician, which I think is, is important as well to clarify. Um, my role is to, to look after international markets. I focus on Africa, the Gulf regions, and Pakistan. With that, I'm in charge of over 40 training providers, such as BSP, School of Accountancy. So I have quite a large portfolio under, under my belt, uh, quite a busy day always, but I also look after international agreements with national bodies. Um, AAT is the Association of Accounting Technicians. We have over 145,000 members and students. We have 80,000 students at any one time. So these guys are part of those 80,000 people, so now we have 80,000 plus 20. I'm also an, an AAT student myself, which is something that I completely forgot to mention yesterday to you guys even though I have a degree in hospitality and tourism management, and I speak three languages. Um, AAT was initially funded in 1980, and it's a sponsor body by um, ICAW, SIPFA, SIMA, and ICAS. And we work with ACCA and, and all these bodies to, to gain exemptions, so an AAT qualified can, can progress if they wish to, to move on from becoming an accountant technician into a chartered professional. Finances are the heart of every business, and every business needs a finance professional, regardless of what size that business is, whether it's a small or a large business. An accounting technician brings those skills and brings the practical, vocational skills that these organizations need. As um, Sean mentioned earlier, um, obviously there's a culture here in Mauritius from what I have learned in the past five days in which obviously only qualify, high qualified um, accountants are able to sign the books. Hopefully now with AAT coming into, into play, those small SMEs, especially those micro-businesses, will be able to, to hire a much lower paid um, accountant to sign those books. So they won't have to, to invest so much on, on that. And will still get quite a high quality result out of that. Um, the role really depends on the size of each organization and what role an accountant technician can play. But they can be from a financial controller to a clerk 's account to purchase ledger um, to, to pretty much we even have CFOs uh, and, and people that work the likes of KPMG, Deloitte, Ernst and Young, Grant Thornton to people who run their own businesses so you don 't even have to work in a finance department, you can run your own business and still be an AAT qualified so there 's opportunity for everyone there 's no entry requirements into the AAT qualification. And that's what Sean was trying to reiterate earlier, is that there's opportunity for everyone if they wish to, to become an accountant. So these guys who fail their essays, um, they now have, a, have an opportunity to, to gain that further education and hopefully progress in their careers, whatever field they choose to, to move and progress to. <clears throat> One, one of the things that has been highlighted through our meetings with MQA, HRDC, um, SMEDA, and Mauritius Business is that there is a need for vocational education. There's a lot of highly qualified people, very highly academic, but there's not enough vocational uh, people. And employers are seeking skills that these highly academic people are not able to, to bring into place. And with AAT, offering those practical skills that they are job ready. 
they are ready to move straight from, from having finished their, their qualification straight into the workplace. And they wouldn't need much training either because they have gained already the training through the qualification. So it's, um, it's a fantastic qualification, really, for, for employers and for those ones looking uh, <coughs> at employing a, an accountant at, of, of all levels. Um, AT as well is a great qualification if, you, if employers are looking to, to retain their employees as a way of attracting them and motivating them and upskilling them. Um, it's also um, offering them a, an opportunity to then retain for the longer because then they can progress them into the ACCA or SEMA, ICW, if that's something that they're looking at. So they can retain the members <coughs> of staff for much longer uh, because of that. Um, it also helps, obviously, um, with increasing the team's uh, productivity and efficiency because um, they have people that are doing the job straight away. Um, one of the things that I wanted to explain earlier and something that I explained um, a couple of days ago to, to you guys is that one of the things that AAT really wants to do is rebalance the accounting profession. For many years, and this is an example that we've seen in Mauritius, is that there's a lot of chartered and very highly qualified accountants, but there's no many operational at the operational level. So we're trying to flip that and bring more operational people and less strategic people. So the pyramid um, has a bit of a, a completely different shape to that. And that's all really from me. Unless you have any questions for me, please. Students, so uh, they have they have to finish uh, what uh, level of uh, secondary to to be able to join the eight eight. As uh, Mrs. Elrith mentioned, in fact, to do eight, it is open. There is no requirement, actually, requirement. And you know, um, in in Europe, this is very challenging because. You, you can't discriminate somebody when they don't have a, 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 a previous record. Because in this country, the, you know the law uh, is very st strict and people, there's a lot of lobby which is done in order not to have any discrimination in education. And in Mauritius also, uh, even ACCA, other bodies, they, they, they understood this. And even for ACCA, there is also the entry route where there is no qualification. You can start and to do uh, the level one, and once you finish, then you go you go to other level. So everybody, all the organisation in the world, institution, they have realised this. And I think AT is was giving that long time. In. This is very what, long time. What 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 is the age of uh, um, to start? The minimum age. Usually it's around 16 years old. Yeah. 16 to 35. Yeah, that's, yes. If you can check our, our data. Yeah. Um, in the database of 18, I mean, you can recruit somebody 16 to 35. It does not mean that when you are above 35, you cannot do it. But normally, according to 80, they have seen the trend around, around the world. This is the bracket of people that. Start. Especially with women returning back to work after having had a child or career changes, it tends to see between the 30 and the 35 year mark. And uh, uh, how long is the, the course? It depends on what courses. So AT offers um, computerized accounting courses, bookkeeping, and also we have what we call the main qualification, which is um, split into four different levels. So once they finish the, the last level, they can become a they can gain, sorry, a professional uh, diploma in accounting. Uh, and, and depends, sorry, depends on the individual how long that can take them to, to achieve that. Yeah. You just said diploma in accounting. Compared to ACCA, what, what, is it, what we have in Mauritius, at what level they, they can go at the highest? Because someone without ASC in Mauritius, we know, but, but it won't be easy to go in the in accounting system yeah. in Mauritius. Yeah. Um, professional diploma sits on level four. If that level four, the four one they finish that, they get complete exemption from level one SCA. Yeah. So AAT has got arrangement with a lot of qualification, with ACA, with SCA, with CIMA, whereas they accept AT as a feeder. 
once you pass AT, you go directly to level 2. So those students who are doing that, if they want to pursue a career in accountancy, they become, they want to become qualified. Therefore, we, uh, AAT and BSV has taken them from where they were in the situation they had no choice. Now, once they complete that, they will be as any other student who have completed level one. So they become similar. They can compete with those students and then they can finish their career as a professional accountant with ACCA, CIMA, etc. Now, the only requirement also that you know you will need is that you, you understand English. You can write English. That's of course is basic. And uh, uh, some students uh, here they have passed the SC. Some they have not. Some they have a few subject passed. Some they have passed the HSC, uh, but they did not get too many or whatever. So there are students who who come from a good background. They are not uh, attending a C or HSC. So our lecturer can tell you uh, the level of our students is, is very good. And we are very sure that we can take the first batch very fast. And all of them will have uh, will, will become a deserving manager somewhere and, and they can manage business. So they will have enough ingredients to manage their own business one day if they want to become a self employed So uh, I think, I hope I have answered yeah. your question. And uh, since when uh, BSP is uh, uh, giving the course? You know, we had the intention to do that course uh, two years ago. <coughs> because it is a new qualification, we had to go through a lot of hurdles at the MQA. It took about two years because this is a new qualification where you, the entry requirement uh, is free and MQA never had such requests in the past. And therefore, we had to go through all the hurdles. And finally, we, we, we got everything. And now, once we became MQA approved, then we took our first batch this year. And we had about 80 students willing to do that. But you know, we, we managed to retain about 25%. The interest is there. <coughs> Probably uh, now that awareness is needed, and people will be aware about it, that this course and uh, of course, that's why we are invited the press to communicate that to the public at large. But the, the class has already started? Already started. Since when? Uh, since the 15th of February. The first, now, the, other, on the second week, I guess. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and because now we were in Swami Vivekananda as VICC, we have uh, got a lot of leads. Now we need to turn these leads into uh, sales. And these students will come, new students will come again. And we are very happy to work with small batches so that you know we can take them at, at the level we want to. And once these students will be our ambassadors, once they pass and they, they became uh, somebody in the society and whatever they wanted to have in their dreams, so we're going to realize that for them now. So if some student fails sometimes, it does not mean that the student is useless. Sometimes it depends where, what school they were going, what coaching they had, whether they were in the right place. You know, you know, there's a big mismatch in Mauritius for career guidance. And in fact, the career guidance is not working at its best in Mauritius. Some people, they will follow the crowd. Some will listen to the parent, the parent one. Today I was at Mr. Mollon's office. There was a, an interview for women back to work. He said to me, three women came with their mother after 30 years old. Just to show you our economy, our people, our country. So, parents play a very important, detrimental role, sometimes important, sometimes not, not also important, because the, at the end of the day, the youth, they need to know what they need, what they want to become, what is the capacity. You know, last time I went to a college, HSC students, I asked them, what do you want to do as a career? About 75% look at me. They, they, they say, oh, I, don't, I don't know how to decide. And you know in Europe, when you are doing form 3, form 2, form 4, you already decided what, what you want to do. And the guidance is such, it, it's not at school, at home, and you know, the student is prepared. They want to become a carpenter, they want to become a self-employed, 
they want to become an engineer, they want to become a pilot, they already decide their path. But Mauritius also must be like this. Because if you're not going to do that, then you know, you remember at some point in time, uh, everybody was going to India, going to get BA in business, BA teacher. When they come back, the demand is go, then there was the weekend jobless. So the job market, as Mr. Bologwa rightly said, education is investment. It's just like you're going to invest in a business, you have to assess the business potential. Education is like that. If you want to invest in you, you have to decide what I want to become. Will it fit the needs in the future? Is it the right investment now up here? But of course, there is now very easy now. If you go on the internet, you go on the statistics, you see where the shortfall, and you know, accountancy, you will never go jobless. I can tell you that, I can bet. We have produced 1,000 accountants so far. If you tell me if anybody is jobless, I quit. There are about 10,000 students doing SEC at Mauritius. They are all working. Because in, in, in any company, you will need an accountant, you will need an account club, you will need an account executive. Now Mauritius is becoming the back office of Africa, and it is a hub in the Indian Ocean. We will need so many accountants to service Africa. So one day Mauritius will be a feeder for Africa in terms of accounting, a feeder for the rest of the world, because this is a portable qualification. You can go anywhere in the world and you work. So this is the good thing about uh, becoming an accountant or an accounts clerk. You will never be jobless. So I can assure you. When is the next intake? The, the intake is ongoing. It's ongoing because, you know, uh, the student can stop and we can have different lectures. Just like ACCA, uh, a student will sit for the exam whenever they are ready. But uh, now your examination is computer based. Oh, and, 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 and for AD, it is at a pretty time. And now they are on demand? When they, when they join the main qualification? Whenever they are ready, they want to sit. Whenever they, yes, exactly. So that's yeah. why, you know, business is changing, qualification is changing. Now, uh, whenever you are ready, you can. You can sit for that uh, qualification. And uh, it costs the same as ACCA? You know, in fact, they, uh, you cannot compare it. It's not comparable because ACCA, the, the students know that they have to do only 14 papers out of 16. And there's a time frame and there's a cost. Whereas in this qualification, some students will top up the SC. At the same time, they are doing the AAT, they are going to do the five or six papers for SC. Mm -hmm. And in the next year, they can do the two free papers for HSC. And then by, side by side, they will do the AAT. So you see, they will have a free in one. And the, the, the icing of the cake is they are getting trained also in practice. Some, sometime during their the free years period, they are going to be placed as employers for one week, two weeks and come back during the vacation. Uh, or at VSP, we, uh, we cannot employ everybody, but we will do it on a rotation basis. So we, we will be able to put five, six every month in our system, and at least they understand how to work, getting the work ethics. So when you compare it, uh, the qualification costs around 4,000 per month over three years. Now, if you, if you see what is 4,000 rupees, an SC tuition will cost you 500 rupees, 600 rupees per month. So you have six papers, that's 3,000 already if you are doing SC. And HSC will cost you 1,000 rupees per month. And now, for 4,000 rupees, you are getting uh, the SC, the HSC, plus the AAT, and plus the work ethics top top up. So you see, it's a very value for money. And you know, I think any parent who want to recover their kids and to put them in the right direction, 4,000 rupees, if you divide it by 30, so you, you need not be an, an expert to know how much it costs per day. So is it that money you're going to throw on your kids' future? And you see BSP, they are to start this, because we think that this is the future also. And we have, if we, if we want to become a high level income economy, we cannot increase the gap between the can and the count. 
otherwise there will be big social problem, economical problem, and you know, it's not going to work in a small economy like Mauritius. So I think the government also has a vision to give training, and, and yet they have shown their intention through YEP, through NSPC, through Women Back to Work, and you know, the intention is there. Now, uh, we as private sector, we have to catch this opportunity and to bring our savoir faire and to, to give it back to society. And we are very pleased that we get AET to partner with us. They have come and they can tell you about our professionalism. They have checked the way we run our business. So I think that we have a very long way to go. And I tell you, there is a, a potential of 7,000 students per year. And there's a big potential in this market. Are you going to have those who would like to receive for SC this year? Yes. We will is have. that included in that 4,000? How is it is going to work? Because if you need to, if you are going to college or you are going to... No, to what is, give it the student will pay BSP only for what we give them here. The student, it, it was already explained to them, they know, the parents are aware. Whatever they have to pay outside of their costs. For example, they have to pay SC examination at their costs. We are going to give them the coaching for all the papers and only for the new tuition. They will have to pay the cost of exam, whether it is AT, SC or HSC, but their cost. But all the tuition costs, books, everything, training is covered by BSP. Anything for entrepreneur? Yes, any entrepreneur who wants to send their staff here, they're going to get a HRDC refund. Or if the entrepreneur themselves, they want to come. They, uh, we, it is full time. And we also have an option for part-time Saturday, Sundays for the project. You said it is between 16 and 35. We know that uh, sometimes in life we have a 40 years ceiling. Someone leaves his job and wants to become an entrepreneur. So can we see somebody having my age uh, or, or over 50 or over 40 to join in to, to be in the 80? Yeah, it's important to everyone. Um, we say 16 to 35 because that tends to be the trend. And the, and the age groups that uh, most AAT students um, feed into, but it could be at any age, it could be a 70 year old as well. Um, you know, any qualification will not have any restriction on, the, on age. When I was doing my CCA in the UK, there was a guy 65 years old doing CCA. And I was looking at this guy, I was very inspired. One day I asked him, I go, he was from Trinidad and Tobago. I said, why, why at this age, 65, you're doing your CCA? You know, he said to me, in my time, I was an accountant without qualification. Now I created a legacy. My children are accountants, they're running the business. I want to become a qualified chairman. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a very good decision. I, I saluted that guy. And he completed the decision together with me. And he became the chairman of that group as a qualified accountant. So they have a mission, you see. So that there's no age system. His skills became qualified because he could not afford it at that time. But you see, uh, there is, you can learn at any age. My question is for Mrs. Coral. How many such uh, AAT satellite schools you have worldwide? How many, sir? How many AAT satellite schools you have, like here? Worldwide. Oh, training providers, you mean? Yes, yes yeah. we have over 800 training providers worldwide. And in Africa? In Africa, approximately, we have about 25. 25. 25? Okay. Yeah. 12 alone in Botswana, which is AAT's biggest international market. We have almost 4,000 students there at any one time studying AAT. Oh yes, um, Seychelles, Seychelles as well is quite a big market for AAT. We have one training provider there only, because it's quite a small island. Um, but we have approximately 350 students at any one time there. It's a big market in Seychelles. It's a big market for, for us there. So we're just going to lag behind. How much in Seychelles? Approximately 350 at any one time. You said you started in 1980? 1980, yes. was founded in 1980. 90. 1980. 1980. And uh, since then, 
what, what has been the percentage of failures? Oh, um, I wonder how that that in terms of failure, in terms of students' uh, pass rates, you yeah. mean? I don't have that information myself, but I would say that at least 70% of our students will pass AAT. It obviously depends on the training and the, and the tuition that they have. Less than 10%? No, no, 70%. No, 70. 70%. Pass. Pass. 70 pass. And you're satisfied? I will, I will have to check that stat though, because that's a stat that was given to me a, a couple of years ago, so they may have easily improved on that. And why did you choose Mauritius? Why Mauritius? Um, well, we ACCA has 10,000 students here, and we are very, we've been very aware over the past few years that um, there's quite a big failure, um, low pass rates on ACCA students. Um, BSB obviously approached us, and we did our quality checks on them. It took a few months to, to get them up and running, um, and obviously to get the MQA recognition. That took a long two years. But we are very confident that we have the right partner um, in Mauritius to, to deliver AAT courses and to launch AAT. Before coming here, you had an idea of the way accountants uh, do their work here. As uh, we do have Indian accountants who have a particular way of doing uh, the accounts. Uh -huh. The Chinese people do it another way, uh -huh. and the English and the French uh, is yeah. still well, AAT is with a global, their own method. Yeah, AAT is a global qualification, so we work to standardize you know, our uh, accounting, accounting process sorry, um, across the globe. And it's the same that ACCA does, ICLW, SEMA, you know, where there's one, one standard across everywhere. And, and I think that's hugely important if, if economies want to, to, to rise and, and improve. You think it will be an easy thing to bring it at a horizontal level? Sorry, say that again? To, to bring the accountancy as a team here in Mauritius? Yes. The horizontal way? Yes. Standardized? Yes, so we're trying to do that a bit more vertical rather than horizontal. Currently, so um, charter accountants will lose quite a huge number of charter accountants. What we're trying to do is to make it a triangle. So. Um, there's more, account more accounting technicians at operational level, middle management level, and less charter accountants at strategic level. You need more people doing and less people thinking so that decisions are being made quicker and faster, but efficiently across the operational level. We should Does that make that? sense? <laughs> you know that uh, accountants are very conservative. They would like to keep their own method. And we you say you're going to extend our eye. That's a big challenge for you. I mean, um, our syllabus um, works very well in, in all countries. Um, we, we're not looking at reinventing the wheel and, and changing how things work in Mauritius. We're looking at supporting accountants and supporting businesses to, to help improve their ways and, and invest in the right um, human resource level. Uh, so we're not here to, to change anything. If anything, we're here to, to support and, and help improve um, how things are working currently. And that's one of the reasons why we met with Business Mauritius, Smeda, because we want to understand the challenges that sm small businesses, but also the large businesses that are, are facing here in Mauritius to see how we can work together in a cross collaborative manner. And that's why one of the reasons as well why AAT uh, updates its qualification every two or three years, and we always do it on the back of employer consultation. Thank you. Any more questions, please? All right. If there's no question.